With the framing complete, it was now time to do the roof decking and shingles. In order to do that, I'd need some scaffolding. I used four sets of pump jacks made by Qualcraft. I used two sets for each of the eight roof sections. With the four sets, I was able to do two sections at a time. Here's two sets. Each set uses two 14-foot 2x4s. This is the heart of the system. The pump jack has a pumping mechanism that allows a worker to use his foot to pump the jack up to the desired height. Do a search on Qualcraft on YouTube to see videos of how the system works. The workbench brace attaches to the pump jack and supports a work surface to place your tools and materials. Each set of pump jacks uses two braces that hold the two 14-foot 2x4s vertical. Here, the bottom brace isn't installed yet. Normally, the braces are attached directly to a building's wall, but I had to take into account the overhang of the roof, which meant I had to make some extenders for the braces to attach to. The bottom extender was attached to the 2x10 headers. The top extender was attached to the handrails. The diagonal extender brace kept the top extender from sagging. Here's a view of both extenders for one section. And a view of one brace attached to the top extender. Here's a top-down view of a bottom brace attached to the bottom extender. And finally, another top-down view showing the four extenders. Here's the lumber I used for the platforms. The bottom platform, what I stood on, was made of two 9-foot long 2x12s. The platform with the workbench was made up of two 9-foot long 2x8s and one 2x6. Each of the pieces that made up the bottom platforms was stiffened with a 7 foot long 2x6. Each of the two pieces that made up the bottom platform looked like T-beams when looked at straight on. One section of scaffold is lower than the other by about a foot and a half. The lower one made it easy to load heavy materials like a package of shingles, while the upper one made it easy to get up onto the roof. And here's what the scaffolding looks like from above. Alright, as you can see, uh, I just removed the um, bottom braces for the uh, 14 foot pole that I use to uh, for the scaffolding and uh, I've removed the bottom braces for all four posts two posts per section and I figured I would show you uh, how I go through the process of moving uh, these posts uh, to the last uh, two sections uh, seven and eight so, since I've removed the bottom uh, uh, braces, it's now time to remove the top braces. I've done... I've so, done. it's uh, climb up the ladder. There's two uh, members to the brace. There's a, uh, I guess, a diagonal brace, which I'm going to be removing now with two screws. And uh, the post is still going to be sturdy because you got this vertical brace. And that's where it gets a little tricky. Not too bad. Okay. So the first screw comes out. We're still good. And. Uh, Take out the last screw, but let me. I'm holding the post with my right hand while I remove the screw with my left. 
so now the post is freestanding. There goes the vertical. Oh shit, I forgot to lift this up. Oh, damn it. Alright, I'll rotate it. 90 degrees. Now it's rest, resting on the roof. And then I'm going to get this extension out of the way so that it doesn't get entangled in the spindles or the uh, scrolled corner braces. Okay, so we're good. Now the next step is to actually move the posts from one position to the next. Well, before I uh, move the uh, scaffolding posts, I have to remove the scaffolding extenders. I'll move them and into the new position, and then we'll actually start moving the scalp scaffolding posts. These uh, scaffolding extenders are attached to the uh, to the railing, the upper railing of the uh, ballast banisters. So, first step is to remove the screws to the brace, the vertical brace that holds it in place. So I just uh, bring that up over the banister. And then I remove those, well, the diagonal braces actually. So, it's the upper extender. You'll notice I've got these uh, temporary braces that go from the post, the post that supports the roof, to at a 45 degree angle to the decking. There's one screw at the top and one screw at the bottom. And the reason for that, and there's all eight of them are in place. And the reason for that is when I'm working on the roof, it sways a little bit, just enough to be unnerving. So I decided to put these posts up, these braces up. Anyway, so we'll go down and uh, watch the dismantling of one of the uh, uh, scaffolding extenders. So that's it. The scaffolding or the extenders are disconnected from the gazebo and now it's a matter of just reversing the procedure and, uh, and then reattaching them to sections 7 and 8 and then screwing it in place. So that's in place. So here's the top extender. The first thing I'll do is attach the diagonal braces. All right, so both uh, diagonals are attached. So now I just move this out, line it up with the edge of the, uh, of the railing. And that's it. So, three more to go, and it'll be time to move the post, the scaffolding posts. You can see the scaffold is top heavy. I could have dismantled the pump jacks first before moving them to the new location and then reassemble them, but this method, although a bit dangerous, was much faster. Okay. 
As you can see, I'm moving the bottom a foot or two, then following up by moving the top. And that's it. It's in place. Three more to go. Let's try that. underneath. Oh shit. Great. How do I do this now? I'm gonna push it, let it go down. Okay. What? Did somebody just say dangerous? So... Now, this is the tricky spot. You gotta get the first screw in while holding the post in balance. So right now I'm holding it with my elbow to keep it in balance. And there, once you get the first screw in, it gets a lot easier. So now the second screw. Uh-oh, I might have a problem here. Whoop. Because I've got to arrange now to get this uh I'm gonna do this now. I may have to take down this piece. That's like 
this out, Jeff. Oh, see, that's in the way. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We can bend it a little bit. There we go. So while I'm holding this, I'm holding the I'm holding the uh, sca the post. So now I can uh, well the post should stay by itself now. All I gotta do is that uh, diagonal brace has to be screwed in. And once that's done, everything will be secured. And that's it. The hard part's done. Tighten this wing nut so it doesn't slip on the post. And then we just screw the vertical post to the extenders. diagonal brace gets connected and that's it oh one more thing I like to put a uh, get that horizontal and I'll put a screw, there's a hole here, so that you can keep this connection to the post in its proper place and not have to rely on the compression of the wing nut. And that's it. It's done. And it's not perfectly perpendicular. I purposely set it so that it would lean in towards the gazebo a little bit. I feel it's a lot safer doing it that way. So anyway, three more to go like this.